From actors standing up for writers to getting canceled by a superhero, filming The Addams Family was a wild ride for everyone involved. When it comes to Gomez Adams, there are two names who immediately come to mind, John Astin and Raul Julia. Both actors helped to shape the beloved character with a snappy dress style, a delightful mustache, and total devotion to his wife and family. Considering the Adams Family members never had first names before the television series aired, the classic show all but shaped who they were and how they would behave going forward. However, it could have been very different had Aston been cast for the original role he was earmarked for. Speaking to the AV Club, the actor explained how he wasn't required to audition because of his status at the time. It also helped that he was familiar with the Adams Family. He'd collected Charles Adams cartoons when he was in college, so he was particularly excited to be a part of the show. The role he was initially pitched was that of Lurch, which Aston admitted seemed daunting. This plan changed, though, after producer and show creator David Levy contacted Aston with another suggestion. Aston told the AV Club, he said, This show is really father knows best with different people, and I want you to be the father, and then we'll cast the rest of it. So we discussed it further, and I realized that I could make up a character because there were really only a couple of clues from Charles Adams' cartoons. Naming a child Wednesday isn't the most outrageous parental act ever committed. However, the case of Wednesday Adams is intriguing because it now seems like a fitting name for her personality and appearance. Speed Wednesday! Still, one has to wonder who came up with the idea to name her after a weekday in the first place. According to a letter sent to The New Yorker, Joan Blake claimed credit for the name after a chance encounter with Charles Adams at a mutual friend's party in the 60s. Blake wrote in the letter, Charles Adams made me laugh and told me that the Adams family was being made into a television show and that he had no name for the little girl. I said, Wednesday. Wednesday's child is full of woe. And Wednesday became her name. According to the book The Adams Family in Evolution, Blake's story does check out as Adams mentioned it was a friend who suggested Wednesday after reciting the line from the nursery rhyme, Monday's Child. There are many creators who despise adaptations of their work. But according to the Adams Family producer David Levy, Charles Adams was nothing but supportive of the classic television series. Writing for the Los Angeles Times, Levy stated the following. In 1964, at Christmas time, Charles Adams wrote to me that the TV series was a stylish, great show. In 1986, two years before he died, he wrote to me again stating that he still viewed the series with satisfaction. However, Levy doesn't believe Adams would have looked at the live-action films quite as fondly, believing they missed the mark of what the Adams family was really about. Of course, this is simply Levy's thoughts on the matter, as Adams passed away three years before the 1991 film was released. Perhaps if Adams had still been alive, he might have had some input for the final product. Cousin It is arguably one of the most beloved characters of the Adams family. However, it didn't make his debut in Charles Adams' cartoons, but rather the classic television series. As per the Los Angeles Times, actor Felix Silla, who played Cousin It, said, A producer dreamed it up in some nightmare. Silla's sole purpose was to walk around in costume for the scenes that required him, while the lines for the character would be dubbed in later in the post-production process. There was one problem. Scylla's costume was made from real hair, which made it extremely heavy and dangerous since everyone on set liked to smoke. Fearful that he might be set on fire one day, the producers changed his costume to a much safer option, which featured synthetic, fireproof hair. The Adams House has become a critical part of any version of the spooky family. In various interpretations, it has taken the shape of a mysterious haunted mansion, and the classic television series employed a similar approach as well. While most of the action took place inside the home, which was shot in a studio set, the outside of the house was featured in the show's intro, publicity photos, and the first episode. It would have been possible to utilize a model house for the footage, but there was an actual Adams house in Los Angeles, California. Well, for a short while at least. According to 21 Chester Place, a website that covers the history of this famous property, the production company used the house for stock footage. Since the company didn't own the property, it employed an effects studio to add the necessary details to the footage and photographs. Unfortunately, the fabled Adams House no longer exists, as it was demolished in 1967. Lurch might look all doom and gloom, as if someone stole his secret stash of chocolate cookies, but there's a lot more to the Adams' staggering butler than meets the eye. The role of Lurch is a part that features a lot of nuance and subtlety, something not many actors can pull off. 
Ted Cassidy not only delivered a fantastic performance as Lurch in the Addams Family TV series, but he also became the measuring stick for the character that all other actors will be judged by. Surprisingly, Lurch was the first television role where viewers got to experience both Cassidy's voice and face as he had only done voiceover work before. Standing at six foot nine, Cassidy had a successful semi-pro basketball career, especially in the college leagues. However, the entertainment bug bit when he secured a gig as a radio DJ. Then, at the age of 30, he decided to give acting a try. Fortunately, due to his towering frame and distinctive voice, he was deemed the perfect person to bring Lurch to life. You rang, sir? You're fired. Taking one look at the patriarch in Charles Adams' cartoons and John Astin's Gomez, it's clear there are differences in their appearances. As Astin explained to the AV Club, the producers allowed him the space to shape the character for the show and to tinker with the source material. However, in a separate interview with the Television Academy Foundation, he explained how he received pushback from the network as it wanted Astin to shave the sides of his head to look more like the character from the cartoons. Fortunately for Astin, producer and show creator David Levy backed his ideas and ultimately ultimately allowed the actor to choose the path for Gomez. Aston told the AV Club, I wanted to look more attractive and I thought that would work better. And it turns out one of the strongest elements of the show is the Gomez-Morticia relationship. Aston believed this tweak to his character's appearance further fueled the natural chemistry between Gomez and Morticia on the show. Considering how they are still seen as a guiding light for couples around the world, it appears as if Aston's decision was right on the money. While John Astin's Gomez, Carolyn Jones' Morticia, and Jackie Coogan's Fester may have stolen all the limelight when the Addams Family television series was released, the children also inspired a generation. Lisa Loring's Wednesday became a future goth icon, while Ken Weatherwax's Pugsley became the living embodiment of the macabre nature of the show. For Weatherwax, though, the role became more of an albatross than a Kickstarter for a successful career. Speaking to Bill O'Reilly, Weatherwax revealed how he struggled to find acting gigs after The Addams Family since most producers only saw him as Pugsley. Yes, I went out and, and interviewed for several roles, but I was typecast to Pugsley. The role also took a toll on his personal life as he experienced bullying from his classmates. Weatherwax told O'Reilly, Frankly, I didn't deal with it very well. I was kicked out of about six or seven schools and ended up in the service at the age of 17. Most five-year-old children are still busy learning to read and write, not even giving a second thought to what they want to be when they grow up. Lisa Loring admitted to the Sydney Morning Herald the same was applicable to her, as she had to learn how to memorize her lines before she could even read for her role as Wednesday Addams on the Addams Family television series. It certainly made no difference, though, since the show changed her life and made her one of the most well-known child actors in the industry. Loring revealed that she didn't have a comprehensive filmography when she auditioned for Wednesday, yet she still secured the role over another young actor auditioning for the part. It seemed surprising that Loring came out on top since there's often a natural reluctance from productions to cast very young children. Loring claimed the reason for her casting success was because of her uncanny resemblance to Carolyn Jones, who portrayed her on-screen mother, Morticia. Despite the Addams Family television series finding its audience and becoming a runaway success, it only lasted for two years on the air. In an interview with the Television Academy Foundation, John Astin revealed how surprised he was to hear that the show had been cancelled, though he knew the then president of the network had a slightly different sense of humor which may have impacted the abrupt decision. However, Astin expressed how another show's debut may have also played a pivotal role in the cancellation. Astin told the Television Academy Foundation, Batman had come on opposite the Munsters, and a lot of the programming people thought about Adams and Munsters as the same kind of show. Batman came on with a big rush. It was a storm and tough to go up against. I think there was some thinking that the Adams family would go away. You shallow brain simpletons, where's your imagination? Your ambition? Aston appeared in Batman, portraying the Riddler in season two of the show, while Ted Cassidy's Lurch also made a guest appearance in an episode. There's sage advice that says never mess with a winning formula. 
But in the world of TV executives, they love nothing more than to tweak and change things, even when the show is a smash hit and everything works well. It turns out the Addams Family television series wasn't immune to this phenomenon either. As John Astin revealed to the AV Club, the actor gushed about working with producer and series creator David Levy and head writer Matt Perrin, explaining how there was a natural artistic synergy between all parties and how it developed into a friendly working relationship. However, the production company decided it wanted to replace Levy and Perrin, so Aston and Carolyn Jones intervened to get their old crew back. Aston told the AV Club, at one point, they replaced David and Nat, and they hired somebody else to direct and write. But Carolyn and I got together and said, you know, this isn't what we signed up for. And we went to Filmways, the producers, and said, you've got to get David and Nat back. And they did. While reboots are fairly common in both film and television, the Addams Family television series' unprecedented success scared off potential suitors from trying to redo it. The franchise lived on through various animated shows and live-action films, but there was a fear of reviving the series until 1998. The new Addams Family featured a brand new cast, with John Astin later making guest appearances as Grandpapa Adams. The show won a few Leo Awards in 2000 and introduced a new generation to this kooky family. But it didn't have the same lasting impact or cultural influence as the original series. Ironically, there's also a misconception that the new Adams family was short-lived in comparison to the original. That's inaccurate, though, since the classic television series ran for 64 episodes from 1964 to 1966, while the new Adams family aired 65 episodes from 1998 to 1999. Of course, the original series returned for a reunion TV film, and the cast provided their voices for the characters in other projects. However, the new Adams Family still holds the distinct honor of lasting for one more episode than its predecessor.